these strings my goodness they are a hundred years old but this is the first time they will ever be to the northern region thanks to the ingenuity of celebrated Ghanaian artist Ibrahim Maham I mean look these were abandoned hey. mm. they were left and they were rotten in fact they were being sold like this one it's been put together mended or welded because uh, it was seen as scrap and it was being sold, but it has artistic value. It has memory. There's so much we can do with these. And so it has taken the vision of one young man, one young Ghanaian, to go get all these trains, bring them together at a place called Red Clay Studio so that children in the Northern region can, for the first time, get to see a train, experience it, and learn about them, learn in them. That's exciting, don't you think? And for the first time, you could tell the joy in the eyes of the people when these trains made their journey all the way from the south of Ghana for the first time, historic journey to the north. I'm going to have a conversation with the artist, Ibrahim Mahama, to understand what the philosophy behind assembling these planes is. But first of all, let me show you how excited the people were seeing the trains journey all the way from the south. Out here to the north. Climate shift. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. you know, the last time I came, it was all green. Yes. This time it's hot. Yeah. Normally we're in a dry season, yeah. so normally around this time it's supposed to be a bit chilly. Yeah. It's supposed to be dry, but this year it's been dry, humid, warm. Yeah. It's just a mess. Yeah. No, but what is not messy is what you have done. I mean, it's quite a mess, but yes. you, you're, you're still <laughs> in the business of creating messages out of a mess. Yes, exactly. So we are standing on a lo locomotive. Yes. I saw the videos on social media yes. and everyone was excited. It's been trending and people have been talking yes. and mentioning your name and mixing it all with Ibrahim Mahama, uh, yes. the politician <laughs> once again. But tell me how, how far this journey has been. It's been quite an interesting one, honestly. I was uh, just 25 when I was in uni and I did my first project at a railway mm -hmm. at Edum. They have this old wooden bridge that was constructed constructed by the British back then and I'd wanted to do like a project on it one of my jute installations where I wrapped up the entire yes. bridge and uh, I later on also worked with the urban roads in a railway to do this new bridge that had been built at the time in 2014 okay but at the time also there was the area manager of the railway Quigri who was a really interesting man who was very interested in the ideas I was working with so some of my colleagues had gone to secondly to look into the archives because there was an exhibition that we're working on Kumasi. So when I went there and I saw it, I was very fascinated by the entire infrastructure because the Secondly Locomotive Workshop was built by the British in the early 20th century. Wow. And it was a place where they brought all kinds of machines where they could repair the infrastructure of the railway. Right. And I thought it was really fascinating, like seeing these massive structures. So Red Clay, SCC were all inspired by the architecture of that building. Over there. Over there. So subsequently, when I was looking through the archive, borrowing ideas, yeah. things for building here, and I said, oh, I would really like to get some trains here and for years and years and years I tried to get the trains but I could never succeed until just recently when uh, this particular one that we are standing on yeah. was the first one I was able to buy some scrap dealers had bought it and they had started cutting it into pieces actually so, so well, you bought it from the scrap dealers, yes and then you welded it together yeah because they, they had welders who were wor welding with and the welders had a blue touch where they were cutting so they had cut the whole thing into pieces I can tell yeah all the marks everything that's the whole thing was dismantled. 
Yeah, so I um, we were trying to find welders in secondary who could put it together and they were quoting exorbitant prices. And then finally my uncle said, ah, but let's contact the person that we bought it from the scrap dealer. Maybe he put us in touch with the welders who yeah, yeah. had cut it. Yeah. And then we contacted them, they came to see I'm them. I'm sure they had read about you, they know yeah. you have dollars. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Not to know. So they came, they came back and so they said, ah, well, we cut it, so we can put it back it's together. A, and the price we were charging was like 100 times cheaper than the price that they had. Because the other guys just saw it, they're like, oh, give us 50,000. And these guys came, so just give us 2,000, we'll do that thing. Wow. So they, 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 they... So first, you bought this for how much? I can't remember exactly, but there were two of them mm. that we brought from the scrap dealer. Mm. Both this and that one that we're standing okay. together. This, The two of them was almost 200, uh, 340,000 cities. 340,000 yes. for the locomotives? Yeah, for the, for the two, of two of them, yes. But Meanwhile, they I'm sure they together. bought it even four times it's cheaper than I did. So because if you don't buy, they're going to scrap it. Yeah. It's like the other scrap dealers that I was trying to buy their things from. If you, they will tell, they will quote some exorbitant price. Meanwhile, when they cut it into scraps and they take it to the port, to Valco or whatever, they get nothing for it. Yeah, they get nothing for it. But because they need, they know that you need it, they really up the prices. But I was also very desperate in the beginning because I've been chasing it for years. Yeah. Up until the time that I started, uh, a very good friend of mine uh, uh, put us in touch with the Ghana Railway, which the minister was interested in the project okay. and something like that. So they started what actually... What minister is this? Uh, the current minister. Ameu. Uh, yeah, Ameu. He was very interested in the project. So then he said, okay, fine. Why don't you write a letter stating that we should donate the trains to you okay. for the museum project and things like that. So then subsequently, the other things that I got from it, we then, the ministry then now gave us these trains so it could actually help boost the ideas in the museum and so things like that. So the coaches are free? Yeah. The so the coaches and then, yeah, the government released them. So there are still a few more that we're still trying to get from them. Yeah, but these first two locomotives I had to buy, but the other locomotive together with the coaches and then the rail lines and other things, they, they were supposed to be given to us as uh, things that, like pro bono, right. uh, uh, social co corporate social responsibility, something that could help the museum. Because there's no museum in Ghana, technology museum or museum that could hold them. Yeah. There was a museum you mentioned in Germany. The Technique the, Museum. The Technique Museum. Yeah. I went to read on it. Yeah. I, I saw so many, so many things. things. And exactly. you said that everything that has ever been manufactured in Germany, yes. they have a replica they have, Yes, there. exactly. And that place is huge. It's massive. It. It's massive. Floors upon floors upon floors. And you think that the Ghana equivalent is not state-owned, but Ibrahim Mahama inspired. How did you feel when eventually these trains came through the town and the people were happy, they were on tricycles and they were playing drums and all of that? Charlie? Some of them we had like to stay. Yeah, some of it we had to stay because when we were bringing it, the yeah. first time when I was bringing the airplanes, yeah. we arrived in the evening and we were working, we had a police escort, you know, and when people see the police, sometimes they're a bit, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. but this time around, uh, we had police escort, but the police were in the cars that we were using, okay. so we didn't have like a separate police vehicle, okay. and uh, we wanted like the young people to some fun well, fair. yeah, fans, yeah, some yeah. Like, you know, sometimes like when the politicians go to the villages and they give them small small, and the people are like in front, we, uh, we wanted that kind of feeling, you know, <laughs> it was just antics, <laughs> it was very, it was, we just needed a bit of drama, you know, <laughs> it really worked, <laughs> yeah, they had leaves, and then, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, so it, yeah, we just need a bit of drama, and then we did that, and yeah, so when we got to Tamale, when we were entering Tamale from the barrier, yeah, yeah, the guys were there waiting for us, oh, nice. and then from there, here, yeah, normally it's like 20 minutes, yeah, but it took us two hours, oh, wow. because we're going slow, yeah, for the yeah, people yeah. to see, it helps them accept it, exactly, right? because it was the first time, also. yeah, I, I like that, I like that, <laughs> and I like the drone shot when he was driving up the, 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 the overpass, is it a flyover, yeah, there? the overpass, Not yeah, by the mosque, yes, 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 it was so beautiful, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and, and, and the one I liked but broke my heart was the one on the Pra River. Yeah, Pra River. Yeah. So those that I did two shots. Yeah. I did one on the Biposo yes. bridge, and yes. I did all, one also at Praso. Yes. Over the old bridge. Yes. Both of those bridges were built back in the early 20th century. Ah, there yeah. was another bridge. Yes. I thought yes. that was uh, probably some river up here. No, no. I, no. There, there were four bridges I shot. I shot uh, Biposo. Right. And I shot Praso, and then I shot Bupe and Yape. Uh huh. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah. The water was clearer. Yeah, Bupe is clearer, yeah. but Yape is getting destroyed because they're doing a lot of sand winning in Bulga and other places. So, if we are not careful, in the next 20 years, the river Volta might be completely destroyed. Hey, 
Hey. Hey. <laughs> so you must show. You must show. But like we're losing everything. But also another thing that intrigues me is your knowledge of these trains. Yes. So let us know. This locomotive. How old is it? Where is it from? Is it steam? Is it? I almost said is it beam? <laughs> steam or beam? I come on driving. So where is this one from? So most of these trains, all the trains that you see here, they were all produced in Germany, in a town called Kassel. Yes. And Kassel is very important because there is an exhibition that happens there every five years. It's called Documenta. It's like the Olympics of the art world. Oh, wow. I showed in it uh, uh, five, six years ago. Oh, wow. And uh, the, the hall where they used to produce the trains, the Henschel Halle, mm -hmm. was a hall that I used for the exhibition. At the time when I was applying for the trains, I, uh, I made a proposal to use that hall where the trains were produced for the artwork and then they accepted it. Okay. Yeah. And Kassel was the town where Hitler was using it for his his uh, ammunition base. They were producing all the bombs and everything. So when the Allied forces, when the British and Americans, when the time that the Germans were being defeated during the Second World War, it was one of the towns that was completely almost wiped off the surface of Europe because they wanted to destroy everything that Hitler was producing. To yeah, memory, exactly. Yeah. But subsequently, when uh, Kassel, when Europe was rebuilt, the factory was then again built again, mm -hmm. and they were using it to produce trains. Ghana bought a lot of these trains from the post-independence era, and these trains were made in the early 70s so they were brought here and these are electric um, electric slash uh, diesel trains yeah they are not fully electric they are diesel but they use components of it are electric they're all the tra the trains we used before independence they were steam locomotives and uh, those ones were scrapped even before you and I were born oh. yes exactly so these trains are very important because a lot of them were used in the Takwa or Boise in a lot of the mines where there's bauxite manganese and all that and I thought it was important because a lot of the histories which are connected to issues of like the injustice when it comes to like oh our mines are not uh, we, we cannot produce like enough GDP from the mines but they are all connected to these strains in terms of the exploitations that have gone on within our country so I thought why not collect them why not transport them from the south all the way to the north places where even these does not exist before and then we can create new memories out of them particularly for a new generation of uh, kids that are growing up that's that's cheap man yeah because then we're exploiting the the resources yes. we're exploiting all of these yes. and the people were using these yes. but we're not feeling the impact of yes. them yes exactly. so it, it was part of the agitation yes exactly. exactly so if we want anywhere that we can say okay this is something that was used by our forebears yes, yes. inspired pre, yes. pre independent struggle yeah, post -independence. we didn't have it yeah. documented yes. or properly kept yes. until now exactly exactly an idea is to that, that's why I proposed that I, I made a proposal to the railway so we could find a way to collaborate so we could actually get access to these objects and bring them up north here the other thing also about the south is also because of the the sea water mm -hmm. yeah the rust okay, okay. the erosion and all that but when it's here yeah. the weather is dry here right. once it's preserved properly it can stay here for as long as possible yeah it's taking you how long to get these up here when we were transporting them, literally we were on the road for at least three days. We had to sleep in the trucks, in uh, guest houses here and there in order to get them here. But we also took an additional three days just to lift the trains because there were aspects of it. We, they, at the railway in Secondi, they have these old cranes which they had to reactivate. Some of them are also very old. They okay. date back to like the early 20th century. So, hey, then there's a kind of things there. A lot of things, very important things. Because in the beginning, I had made a proposal to actually convert a part of it into a museum yeah. something which I'm still chasing yeah, yeah. so if that That's happens in the future we can have another iteration of red clay but not called in red clay D. at second D maybe second D clay yes <laughs> where we can have different we can have exhibitions happening there we can have uh, some of the locomotives there where children in second D can come and learn about the history of the railway differently because currently it's just a place where the workers work yeah. but kids don't go there but what happens when you can actually make it into a museum because when kids come and they see people working the memory of it stays with them and for me it's very important that we don't separate the working conditions
connections from the memories that can be created out of it from another generation. When I came, I saw some parents and I usually like it when I see parents with their children. Yes. In this case, it was a father, which yes. is very good for me. It means that he's present in yes. the child's yes. life, right? I saw parents come here. Yes. He was throwing a kid and yes. walking around yes. the compound. And I saw some other community children yes. too over here. So when they come, what, what do you tell them and what does it achieve, really? Well, for a lot of these kids here, it's the first time that they are having an experience like this. For all the kids that you saw here today, today was the first time that they physically saw a train in their lives. First time, first time in their lives. Yeah, normally it's difficult. Even in Accra, there are a lot of people who've never seen a train before. In and, Kumasi. Until, until recently, yes. I've not even bothered one before. Exactly. Yeah. So myself, I never gone into a train until I first went to Europe like 10 years ago. Mm. You know? So um, the idea of they coming to see it, but not just seeing them as they're new, but mm. seeing them as they're broken. And then each time they come, they see that there's repair yeah. happening. For me, the idea of the repair yeah. is the core of the work. That they have to witness the repair. So today what we did is that we went into all the coaches. Yeah. Like there are three of them. There are one that we've taken the seats out. Yeah. That we're going to strip everything out of it and we're going to re-weld the entire interior because all the floor is rusted. Wow. So we're going to re-weld the floor. So I wanted them to see it empty and I wanted them to see the other one which they've taken the seats out. Yeah. And then the other one which the seats are still inside which the men that they're working in the car wash that we've employed that they're washing the inside because some of the uh, three of them they were at Kotoku at Nsawam and uh, there were these guys who smoke who had used that at their camp one of it was uh, a place where sleeping and then the other two they were using it as public toilets so Charlie bumps here and there Charlie so we have to wash everything out before we remove the seats repair before we restore it into classrooms again so there's a lot of work but for me that is where the work is that idea that we're taking something from 700 kilometers away we're bringing it all the way here through the pain the trouble all these years we repair we restore it and then we breathe a new life back into it so now when you come in and you see that it's a classroom yeah. where kids are doing coding and other things yeah. you reflect on it based on the processes that it's so been through it's something that was broken exactly but now it has been transformed into something that is usable exactly so like that, this one yeah, it yeah. was cut into scraps yeah, yeah. and then we had to piece it together again yeah. so if we've cut something that would have been sent to a scrap yard yeah. and now we've pieced it back together again then you should apply the logic of it to a much more general context of the society that we live in. That whatever is broken, wherever you find yourself, yes. if you make up your mind, yes. you can mend the You can broken. mend it broken and you can repair, you can restore. You can make it even yes, more you can transform it. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. So the last time I spoke to you, you said we are not a people of repair. Yeah. I remember that so yes. clear. Like when your phone screen breaks, yes. next thing is you have to get a new phone. phone. Yes. Like when she makes you angry, next thing is you have to get a new girl. girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> so we are not a people of repair. Exactly. We don't like to repair. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. So repair and restoration is a big part of... It's a big part of Red Clay. Red Clay was built on the idea of repair and restoration. Not just in terms of physical things, but also things that are connected to our own memories in terms of our livelihoods, mm -hmm. in terms of our history. Because uh, my grandfather, for instance, he walked from Tamale all the way to Accra in the early 20th century. How? Because at the time, where were you going to go? There was no railroad that connected from here. It was still in the Gold Coast era. Sure. So my father, when they were young, the Bupe Road, it didn't exist. They had to go through Salaga, take a uh, boat across the river. At the time, Akosombo Dam hadn't been built. Yeah. So the river was not as open and as dense as it is now. Right. They had to go through Makongo to Yeji, and then they had to take a, a bone shaker all the way to Kumasi when they were going to school. Yeah. Like he was born in Accra. Right. So when his father went to Accra, he was a chef who worked for the British colonial administration. Oh. And there were a lot of Northerners who also migrated from here when the climate was beginning to shift. Mm. They would go to places like Ejura, Mampo, Asante, Mampo. That's where a lot of Muslims like, there. My shoe is gone now. Charlie? Like the heat they spoiled us. Exactly. Thing. Before, these places were thick forest vegetations. Yeah. So once urbanization was beginning to set in, and then also desertification and all that through the Sahara, the weather was beginning to change. So people went to places where they could farm, right. things like that. So now my grandfather would end up maybe as a farmer. Yeah. Uh, he would work maybe in a cocoa farm or something. The produce would be put on a train. We're talking about your grandfather migrating and then what... Uh, viewers don't know is that the camera went off because the heat no Charlie. it just it just affected the camera I and <laughs> <laughs> hey. 
<laughs> no, it, it, it makes it even more impressive yeah. your decision to come back here and invest in Red yeah. because I mean, very honestly, if the average Ghanaian rose to your level of prominence, your level of influence across the globe, the next thing is not to come back. Yeah, but why not? Because you realize all the kids that you saw here, someone needs to inspire them. People, we need to inspire them. Yeah, because uh, we need people who can stay here, who can believe. Because the kind of privileges that I have as an artist or as a person, most people don't have that in life. Yeah. So at the end of the day, how do you use that to influence another generation of people? Because we need more people to believe in this place and to think that one day they can transform this place to be something much better than what they what they inherited. So for me, it's, it's, a, it's a very important thing. When my grandfather went to Accra, later on my father was born there my father was brought here at the age of six my father never left again right. my father has grown up here he's done his work here we were all born here though we might have grown up in the, some of us grew up in the south but the idea was always to come back always and to back. contribute and to back. yes it's very important i see that you have even the railway lines yes yeah we're going to build alliance here so in the future in the next few months we're going to build lines here we're going to have some of the trains activated which are going to work so for the first time so it moves yeah some of them still move yeah yeah. Oh. yeah so some of them still move so we're I going to oh no this one there it will not move but uh -huh. if you connect another train uh -huh. to it which you just need one locomotive that works all the other ones will follow after all in a train there's only one engine that works you just need a single engine that is working and we still have an engine that is working that we're yet to bring once hey. that engine arrives we're going to activate a rail line here and then we can connect a coach to it which will be a classroom so imagine as a child yes, you're sitting in a classroom which is moving yeah. years around <laughs> Yeah, imagine, yeah, imagine, imagine there's the sight of it. Yeah, imagine there's the sight of it. So for me, normally I'm interested in ideas like this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is this is the real Achia <laughs> No, like this is this is actual hope. Like this is you can touch it. Yes, because it was destroyed. People yes. are smoking and yes. defecating yes. in it. Now it's transported yes. here. Everything is yeah. like decayed. decayed yeah. Now you're going to transform right. it or turn yeah. it into a classroom. Yes, and then it's literally moving Even, and kids are exactly. studying in the no, man. Exactly. This, this is incredible. Exactly. And one of the most interesting thing about some of these trains is that where they were. They were always in areas where they were farmlands, huge farmlands. Yeah, whether in Takwa area, of course you can see there, even in the Biposo, mm -hmm. you see that in the palm, you have the palm trees in the background, things like that. On the banks of the Yeah, in the banks of the river, very important. So there's a greenhouse that we've been building this yes. last year, and the idea was to put one of the trains in the greenhouse, where we are going to transform a part of it into like a green field, where you have like trees, like plants growing on top of the tree, with an aquarium inside. It's very important. Yeah, so the idea is to create almost sites of impossibility you know so when you if you encounter a train for the first time and then the thing that you see about it is that oh maybe even in the engine it's been restored and cleaned in such a way that there's an aquarium and then there are fishes moving around the engine it's also about the relationship between the like ecological forms so human beings we always behave as if we are the center of the universe but we depend on everything around us yeah so farmlands greenhouse uh, fishes uh, all these things can coexist within one space Catch. Tell this is serious. Oh. But what goes into how you think? How well. do you, how yeah, well, how do you think? Because this one... Um, the thing is that in my program at Kumasi at the university, we did, uh, I studied philosophy also, in, of course, in a PhD and all that. But the idea is that if uh, the philosophical aspect is not just in the books. You know, in our everyday life, when you move around the country or in a the community, there are things that happen that you see, but you never really pay attention to them. Like now, when we go into the Parliament of Ghosts, yeah. you realize that we have these straw mats that normally here they weave together in order to build... Uh, uh, the walls of like the traditional houses historically they used to use it to build the roofs of the houses the touch houses and all right. that. but this time around we've made it into almost like a maze like a, a labyrinth within the parliament so you can walk within it yeah so imagine like when you when you create something like that and then children encounter it for the first time yeah. it changes the way they look at the everyday yeah. so for me the everyday already has that philosophical aspect in it but as an artist our job is to look at something and look at it again and yeah, again and ask the questions that the ordinary person will not ask because you is just oh at the ABI, I just yeah. use it but for us it's more or less about what if we're at a point where it's in crisis what can it teach us 
Yeah, so for me, crisis is very important. When the world is in crisis, that's the time that we should learn. We should look at things again and ask ourselves, how can we do things differently? How can we recombine life? How can we create life differently in such a way that the damage that we've done to the planet? Because you can imagine, since the steam locomotive was uh, created, the, steam, the first steam engine was created, mm -hmm. till now, the world has gone through a lot of shifts. Like a lot of the climate shifts and things that we are experiencing now, it came only in the last 250 years. Yeah, so how do we, how do we inspire hope within a different generation? By taking the same things from history and somehow giving them new life forms and new perspectives. This, 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 this is beautiful. And, and the planes, they are still there. Yes. And the, the kids learn in Yes, currently we, we even today we're just having like a classroom session with the coding and things inside. Yeah, so you came a, a bit late. Other yeah. than that, yeah, we the but whole morning, like yes, coding, coding in, the, in the, plane. the plane, yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's take a walk yes. around. Yes. Woo, guys. How's it going? Me, I'm loving it too. I, I'm gonna jump. Set. Oh, oh, look at this. Is this how it came? Like. Yes, a lot of the parts were missing from it. So this one, the guys even wanted to break it, and I said, no, they should leave it. When we come here, we'll repair it. Yeah, so you see, even these are all repairs over the years. Yeah, so some of the doors were missing when we're taking them and all that. So we are, so there were doors, doors yeah, protecting the engine all gone. You see, even this one, the top part of the engine is missing. Uh -huh. So the idea... Okay, so when they open the thing, yeah. the gaskets... Yes, like yes, the yes, exactly, gasket. yes, yes. So we uh, have come the welder here mm -hmm. who is going to replace all the parts and then after we clean everything some of them we're going to sandblast parts of it and then repaint them so they'll look very good some of them also we just leave them particularly this one yeah. this is the closest to my heart so we'll leave it just as it is so I like the repair out. yeah I like the repair and everything on it yeah the scars and everything we'll just sandblast remove the like the dirt and other things but the if, body if, will be if, left if I were a musician like I, I'd come write songs here uh, <laughs> yeah there's quite a lot of inspiration within these objects and what they what they propose to us. Yes. 1659. No, this one is in, all the trains have uh, they have uh, numbers. Okay. So when a train derails somewhere, they're like, oh, which train? Oh, 1659. They go in the books. Oh, this train. Oh, this is the weight. This is the, so they know already how to tackle the problem. Uh -huh. They don't have specific names. Uh -huh. You could say that. Oh, Henshaw. But they're like, oh, we have a thousand of them. Which one? But as soon as they say 1659, that's a nice. It's like the number plates. <laughs> Can yeah. you imagine this coming and like, oh, oh, yes, yeah, yeah. One of the things that we have from the old period is the, we have one of the lights from the steam locomotives, okay. which is inside. We took, we got it from Second D also. It's one of the only remnants of like the old system that we were able to preserve, yeah. That's yeah. Serious. And this was Henschel. Henschel, yes. This it's is a very, German yeah, machine. German no. machine, yes. Yeah, German machine. And there was this Helbert Morris. Yeah, yeah, Herbert Morris. So the crane. So let's, let's get to know about this one. Yeah, so this is a Herbert Morris crane. Herbert Morris? Morris, crane. yeah, crane. It's, a, it's an English crane. Okay. Yeah, when you go to the railway, most of the cranes are English. Of course, the English builds the railway infrastructure. Okay. Uh, and this was one of the oldest ones that were brought to Ghana in the early 1920s. Yeah, so when it was brought here, even in the archive, you can see the photograph, uh, which I'll show you. Uh, it was brought to Ghana, and then it was uh, mounted at the Second D locomotive workshop. It was used in the engine room, where they normally, when the trains are going, uh, when they have problems, Problems, they take it apart, they take out the boogies, they rework it, they re-oil it, everything, and then they put the train back together again. Yeah, so recently it had been sold to a scrap dealer, and I bought it from the scrap dealer. Oh, and then, this was sold to a scrap dealer? Yes, yes, yes. It's old, so uh, they didn't think it was uh, necessary. It was obsolete. But I think that it can be restored. All you just need to do is to change the gears and levers and other things, and then it's working again. Because the steel, it's like heavy, so like it's like, this is more than, uh, this is more than 30 tons of uh, steel. How much did yeah. you buy this? This? I can't remember. But you know, I thought, figures. Yeah, but I, I can't remember. remember. You know yeah, me. but it was somewhere. <laughs> you know what to tell me. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> I can't <know> remember. <laughs> oh, this one, we bought it for 50,000 cities. Yeah, 50,000. Yeah. 
but it's so important because the idea is that we're going to restore it and we're going to build a new structure in the future here as an extension of the institution which this will sit on top of it and then we can use it to lift things oh, across so this, this side yeah this side to hold yeah. And then the cable roll so this turns it. around uh -huh. and then the wheels sit on here and there and then it moves back and forth and then you, yeah this, yeah like whilst this is also this sitting on another part of the building going up and down this is going this way and that is going that way by the way did you study engineering or something no 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 but because of my work my father is a, is a civil engineer but because of my work also and like traveling to buildings and I became interested in the mechanics of things how things yeah work, work yeah exactly so I, I pay a lot of attention and when I travel around the world I spend a lot of time in museums which offer like ideas of engineering technological forms and all that yeah so when I come back home and I see things that need restoration or saving I can actually put energy into them and then do some work let's go somewhere else and see something exciting So this this is one of the empty trains. Yes. Let's enter yeah. and see. Yeah, it was filled with the seats, but we had to take out everything. Ah, you've taken the seats. Yeah, we're taking the seats out and everything. Oh, I did not take up as Oh, but there's a lot of hope in it like because all, we, of it, all of it is rotten like this. Yeah. Yeah. Bola. Yeah, but it's not bola. No, we are now going to take off these the the the, the, the floor, uh -huh. and then when we take the floor out, I'm going to keep them because they are artworks in themselves. They are paintings in themselves. Whoa. So some in the future, some of these things could sell, you and we could use the money to, to build them. new buildings. Yo. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> so uh, we take them out, and then I've gotten a welder in Tamale here, uh -huh. who is going to re-weld the entire interior. Whoa. We're going to remove everything, and then we're going to make the entire interior wood. After we insulate everything, we're going to make everything wood and we're going to transform some of them into classrooms Chilly. and transform some of them into living spaces with a cooling system air condition so when you come here you can get a room inside one of this so in the future it's also important I'm also now beginning to think about ways in which we could design other things that could generate some small income that could yeah well, red cafes and all that ice cream shops Chilly. so like there's the seat yeah right? so normally so we have the seats side, yes someone is here yes so you yeah. left this so that if anyone doesn't know, hasn't seen before, then they get to split no, out. This one, we left it because when we're taking them out, the bolts on these ones, it looks like they're rusted beyond. So we need to cut it. Yeah, so we, I'm restoring all of these so we could use them on other projects in the future. Hey. But we'll remove everything, take out everything. We'll take it out to the barest minimum. You'll see even the under. Hey. So I bought metal plates. We're going to re-weld the entire interior before we put the wood in there. Yeah insulation and all that we are stripping it we're almost as if we're building the train from scratch yeah because everything that is inside is uh, is deteriorated so we need to build it from scratch again and then you're using Ghanaians to yes 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 tamale based people the guys who are even washing it are people car wash in town yeah I like the idea that we it's it's these people they've never even seen a train before yeah. but now they are res, they are repairing it yeah. so how much more the people who live with it and all the time tell their family yeah, exactly. that, hey, we do that too. So Charlie and they, what did you you go somewhere uh, what how was your day Charlie today I go I go wash train or I go I go repair train <laughs> it seems it seems hilarious but it's yeah. important so, uh, why would you train that Charlie <laughs> <laughs> you wash train before you want to be on Charlie you know it's you <laughs> wow. So wood, metal, electricals, all, all yeah. So our electrician will do all the electrician, every transformation. What's the story of this one? So this train, yeah. uh, it was used between Accra yeah. and then in Sawam and okay. Tema. Okay. So the passenger train, yeah. So it was parked at uh, Kotoku, okay. at in Sawam. Okay. And then when we got it through the Ministry of Railway, we went there with cranes, we lifted them up. Put it on the Charlie, even the trouble we had to go through, the assemblyman and his people came, they said they will not let us take it. Uh, the chief of people also came, they said we have to come and pour like this. Ah, you know, Charlie, I <laughs> And then, and then, and then, and but scrap dealers come and cut things, and then down. they don't. But you now coming to take the no, full so thing. Seen a crane. crane, yes. So something must Charlie. be <laughs> So, but it's it's when you when you when you have something that you want to do, it's important. If you know what it has to be in the future, you be patient towards it. So no struggle. Yeah, we negotiate with them. We continue the work. If there's any problem, you negotiate, you continue. You speak nice English, but I mean, I know it is money matter. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Charlie. <laughs> hey, that's one thing that makes investors sort of sometimes back off. I know. Because the kind of people, every place there's a roadblock, even the ones that are not there, people are manufacturing, putting in there. 
because you want to benefit from it. Excellent. How bad can that be for investors? You know, because if it's not like you really know what you want to do, you have an allegiance towards this place. I mean, what do you gain from it? You just quit and move, right? But the other thing too is that some of the people that these things are sold to them as scrap metal are companies who are coming from outside the country who set up steel manufacturing companies whatever mm -hmm. and they buy our things oh, and they, they scrap them and then yeah but in their own country they can never do something like that so for me it's important that as Ghanaians we begin to understand the significance of these things so that's why for me I approached the railway ministry about it because it was really really important that we do this actually this way we do it the proper way where Ghanaians actually take responsibility for the everyday things that are here I can already feel the restoration we are talking about from condemned, broken, to restoration, beautification, and usefulness. A lot of cleaning has happened on this particular coach, and I'm told that uh, a few days ago, I couldn't have comfortably sat here. That's at right. All, at all, you couldn't have. There was defecation everywhere in all the coaches. We've managed to clean all of them. And then uh, this is the last one that was being cleaned today. And afterwards, we're going to take out the seats from the inside and then we'll strip it out just like the other ones. And then we can do all the restoration, as I said before. But I, it's very important for people to witness the process of it. Because uh, if you just came here suddenly and you saw a train, a beautiful train, you wouldn't appreciate the, what, work, that the work that has gone into it. So for me, when the kids come, I want them to see the process of it, of how we're building the thing. Because we're always talking about nation building the nation building but it's not just the politicians who are going to build a country we build a country Super. with them you know so for me it's very important because that we the people are the government exactly they are exactly. representatives exactly exactly it's very important so for me it's important that the kids actually see all these processes before they even use it if i were a musician i had some Music video coming up. This, this, like, this is the place. Charlie. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. I think in the future, like some of these seats will be reconfigured in the future. So there'll be cafes and all kinds of things, and it's library spaces. Recently, I bought uh, a collection of like old vinyls, like high life music from like the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. And the idea is to build like a, a music library in one of these spaces. Discography. Yeah, where people can come and listen to old music, but in the yeah, train. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you baby. can imagine. <laughs> imagine you're you in a moving yeah, train everything. and you're listening to music. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, if you say you're taking a lady out, you come here and the train is moving, you're Charlie. playing the music and having some nice cubits. Oh, so full, we boom, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, I, and I can tell this, you know, you got it from Kotoku. Yes, Because yes. I'm seeing King of Kotoku. Yes. Killing them what? Killing <laughs> them, <laughs> Jeff Shaw. <laughs> no, this is where the Wii Masters were doing too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. No, it's good for reggae. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I didn't say anything, uh, I'm sorry. And I'm not here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 wow, so what's the future like for you? Well, there's still quite a lot that is yet to happen. Like even I got this old boat from the Navy and Takradi also, yeah. which we're bringing. So we will also convert that into one of the spaces that can be occupied. And um, the idea, of course, uh, my ultimate idea is to build like an independent art school university here in the future. So most of these things are just ways of opening up the institution because till date people come quickly and they leave. But what if you could come, you could stay here, yeah. So if you transform some of these into living spaces, you know you can come. Oh, the, one of them, the whole train will be empty. We will make it really, really beautiful. There is a place, master bedroom for parents. We'll have some bunk beds or furniture that can be transformed. Kids can stay there. There is a kitchen in it, blah, blah, blah. You can come here with your family. Maybe we say, oh, the whole thing is so, so, and so amount, which in any where it's impossible almost to find because we're not doing it for profit. So anything just to keep the institution, like uh, to keep the facility running. And then you can stay here for a week, you can explore, you can go to all the other places, but you always come back and you know that you're living in something that has history, it's antique, there's an it's iconic and all that. Yeah, and then there are other ones where students from other places can come live in it. 
you can come here, stay as long as you want. There's a pool. Uh, even you can come and learn how to swim. Blah blah. So I, I I want to begin to think about those aspects of the institution that can somehow also help because there's also a lot of pressure on me because I have to run around, teach to keep the institution running, things like. But what if I wasn't doing those things? How will we manage the institution? Essentially, up to now, you don't generate revenue from at all. Here. At all. Nothing here. Yeah. Nothing. Creates revenue. Yeah. All these years, nothing. And I always tell people always come and then they shoot videos. So everything is always free. But hey. Everything is free. But my point also is that we need to do other things. Like if people come to the museum, yeah. they don't have to pay. Yeah. Like if you're coming to watch the trains, well, yeah. no, you don't have to pay. Mm -hmm. But if we convert it, let's say, into a cafe or into a restaurant, maybe into in mm -hmm. the classroom or the music, you don't have to pay. Right. But if it's a living space where you have to Some stay at night, stuff. yeah, like just um, a night talking, it can keep, it can pay cleaners. Yeah. Uh, because there are also people living in a village. Right. We have to buy water. You can imagine that it's been three years now. We've not had water flowing in our taps. It's been three years. When I came here to build the institution, there was no running water in the village. There was no electricity. I paid the VRA to connect the electricity here. I bought the transformer, everything. I paid the water company to connect the water to this place. And then the water was flowing once, almost once a week or something. And then we created a reservoir which could collect the water bit by bit because we needed for cleaning and other things. And at some point when COVID happened and then uh, the president uh, said there was going to be free water, they cut the water. So three years now. When there was supposed to be free yeah, water. Yeah, the, 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 the moment that there was, they announced, the president announced that there was free water, the water was cut. So three years now, we've not had any, not a drop of water in the tank. So every two weeks, we have to buy at least six, six tanks of water to keep the institution running. So all the water we're using to wash the thing is water that we've bought, that we have a reservoir. In the beginning, we also dug all this area is salty water. So even when you dig a well, you can't get good water. Uh -huh. So. This, we also need small, small things that can also allow the institution to... Sometimes I travel and I'm out of reach and then probably maybe there's water that is short yeah. and then maybe um, the money within the institution that's keeping it is run out and then there's trouble here and there. So, but we also, I also, I'm also very stubborn. I also keep saying that we're not going to take money from people coming here because I think that the institution is meant to be a gift to the community and also to the country because the kind of work that I do internationally, people have access to it internationally, but at home, I think that the success should be more at home. Wow. Yeah, how people here embrace it and how it becomes part of their livelihoods and culture is very important. Dr. Clifford Bremer, we need water at Red Clay Studio. I think it's possible. Yeah, yeah. we need water in the village. Actually, we need water in the villages. In the entire village. Yeah, in the entire. Yeah. Collected the pipes already. Yes, 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 yes. And the road to I promised you that I'll tell Terminator. Terminator. <laughs> the road is still not done. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 We we need there are a lot of facilities that need to be done, and it's important because we as uh, ordinary citizens who are doing this these things, the things that can be done to support us is to somehow get amenities running here and there, which can also encourage us to do more. Is there anything else I've not asked you? We could talk all day. Like, no, no, I'm no. not tired of talking to you. No, no, I think we've covered quite a lot. What? Yeah. This is impressive, by the way. Yeah. I love it. Um, I could sleep here, you know. Charlie. Yeah, yeah. So imagine when we finish and we turn them, the idea is to turn most of them into two rooms. So we will divide it into two. Oh. Here we'll make, there, there's a toilet already for each side, okay. but we extend the toilet and then put a shower in it. Okay. So imagine you come and stay here. There is a pool, there's a restaurant, there's a oh. museum. You can pay, let's say, as little even as 200 cities a night. Oh. Meanwhile, the hotels in town, you're paying like 1,000 yeah, up to 1,000. Yeah. Uh -huh, just 200, just keep the facility running. And then, Charlie, you can stay for as long as you want. You can do your things. You bring your... No, no. Let me stop there. <laughs> no, we'll bring our CDs, our laptops. Yes, exactly. Music, we'll yes. create music, music. Yes, exactly. We'll create memories. Yes, exactly. Reproduce memories. We, exactly. I <laughs> will <laughs> 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 call Rajin Boni about you. No, no, we can create it. Charlie, thank you. Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure talking to you, man. Yeah. I like it. Guys, so um, look, please like this video. When you do, um, the algorithm will pick it up so more people get to see. Kindly share the video as well. If you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please do well to subscribe so that we can bring you more of such, right? Thank you so much. Let's do this again.